Hi, everybody. Warm welcome from uh, Nina and myself, Nicole. Um, welcome to our free immersion of Nourish Self. Uh, this free immersion is an introduction to our new workshop, which we'll be releasing next year, February. Um, and it's called Taking Charge of Our Life. Here we dive a little bit deeper into um, the practice of really owning our stuff, taking our power back, um, and really living a healthy, well-nourished, and happy life. Um, with all these current changes in the world, um, not just with that, but also with everyday stuff that comes up for us um, that often throws us off our path. It's so important for us to learn to turn within, to know what it is we need and how we can access um, our tools to bring ourselves back into balance again. So Nina and I are really excited about this workshop, um, not only because we're going to be sharing with you, but also because we are going to be participating as well. Um, you know, we've realized ourselves that it's something that we so desperately need um, and that it's so important for us to keep on checking in with ourselves um, and keep on bringing ourselves back into balance in order to be able to move forward um, healthier and happier. So for those that don't know me, um, Nicole Panzer from Love Me um, recently moved from South Africa to Austria. Um, in Cape Town, I ran my practice from Woodstock um, where I worked a little bit on kinesiology, Reiki, crystal healing, um, and Nina and I know each other from our workshops and retreats that we used to run both in Tulbach and in Langevan on the houseboats. So with further ado, I would like to introduce you to my fabulous partner, Nina. Hi, <laughs> over the mic. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Nina. I am a yoga teacher, yoga teacher trainer. Um, and have a studio in Cape Town, but I'm now living in Mozambique. Uh, I absolutely love traveling and with all my travels have found some really beautiful retreat spots along the way, which uh, <laughs> I started hosting retreats, but then COVID decided to, to have a few other um, yeah, tricks up her sleeves. So now just living the farm life and working remotely, doing online duties and having a chance Put something like this together. Um, so yes, welcome to our three-day kind of nourish yourself home retreat. And Nicole, we like you're saying, you were, how like you're saying, we decided to put it together because we were looking for something to nourish ourselves and something kind of a, an online course we couldn't really find. So that was either too long or too intense, or, or so we just put like a very simple, fun thing together. Um, something that will kind of bring us back to our center, um, kind of back to health. We both had very, a very hectic year and we just wanted something to bring us back into that state of balance. So we weren't looking for any kind of earth shattering massive moves and changes to our lives. We just wanted to make small little kind of incremental changes that would be beneficial and helpful to us. So kind of the next three days and all these three immersions that we'll be doing will follow a similar outline, where tonight we're going to be addressing the topic of owning our stuff. And then tomorrow we'll look at forgiveness. And then on the third day, we'll look at kind of practical tips on how to, to go about kind of merging everything together. So, so yeah, moving on to what we're going to be covering tonight. I'll leave that to my friend Nicole. <laughs> Thanks so much, Nina. Um, so as Nina explained, we'll be having this get together, this talk, free immersion over the next two nights still, including tonight three. Um, and yeah, nourishing self is such a 
some people think of it as being quite selfish, you know, nourishing yourself, um, where you should perhaps be nourishing others. But you've often heard of that saying or that quote, perhaps, where um, you can't give to others from an empty cup. So it really is important for us to make sure that we find a way to nourish ourselves um, in order for us to then function better um, to the outside world and to the people that we live with, you know, whether we are parents, partners, um, business owners, whatever it is that we do. So this evening is really all about owning your stuff, owning our stuff. Um, and the reason why we found that being quite important is because we can't really allow ourselves to nourish ourselves or move forward into that nourishing state if we don't own what it is that, that is perhaps preventing us from allowing ourselves to be nourished. Um, so, you know, we're going to be taking a, a closer look at this as like, how do you own your stuff? And what is it that could be owned? Or what is it that I even mean, or we mean with owning your stuff? Um, but before we even dive deeper into that, we're going to just start with a little grounding, arriving, checking in on ourselves um, in order for us to really be able to move forward aligned uh, with this evening's practice. Um, and Nina will be doing a beautiful grounding exercise. <laughs> so lovely. Um, if you do have a pen and paper nearby in hand, you might just want to have that next to you. So we should have told you right at the beginning <laughs> to possibly look that. So if it's if it's nearby, just grab it. If it's not nearby, don't really stress about it. Um, and then our little kind of e workbook um, if you want to kind of have that nearby you can have that nearby otherwise um, if we haven't sent it to you yet we will send it to you shortly so when you are ready and again there's no rush but just start off by sitting really comfortably so in whichever way works for you and if you find that sitting isn't working for you today, then feel that you can lie or um, or even sit on a chair, whatever, wherever or whatever works for you. But as long as there's a sense of stability. So once you've found that comfortable, stable, seated position, allow your eyes to, to close. And just take a moment to feel your buttocks, your sitting bones sinking down into the earth. And observe that weight, that sense of weightedness. And the sense of support below you where the two weights, the two forces meet, your own body weight and the weight of the earth, that earth element and allow the earth to support you. And as you release down into the ground, allow the spine to slightly rise up to lengthen, the shoulders to soften. And allow yourself to experience the space you are in now. That still, soft, quiet space of where your body feels stable and steady. The upper body light and the head feels free. And then when I say the word happy, how do you experience that word? Do you experience it as a sense of a sensation? Do you see it as a color or an image? Does a certain part of your body light up a tingle? 
when I say the word happy, how do you experience it today? It might be an image, it might be a smell or a taste. Just observing. And then take a moment to think about how you feel when you've eaten a lovely, nourishing meal. What sensation, feeling, color kind of lights up with inside you when you think of how you felt once you've eaten beautifully balanced, nourished meal. Notice how you feel when you've maybe completed a work-based project or an activity around the house. What part of you kind of lights up? When you wake up energized in the morning, how does that make you feel? Where within your body do you experience that sensation? And how do you feel when you surround yourself with positive, happy people? Just noticing how that makes you feel inside when you think of that. And now take a moment to notice how you feel when you've maybe had a meal that hasn't been very nourishing. How does that make you feel inside? when you've maybe overcommitted yourself and you don't complete or reach a deadline. How do you sense that? How does that make you feel inside? When you wake up sluggish or lethargic in the morning, You think about those days if you wake up like that. How does that make you feel inside you right now when you think of that? Or when you surround yourself with really negative kind of heavy people that draw you down. Where do you feel that heaviness? Now just release all sensations, all feelings, all images, just let them all go. And return your attention to the firm, solid ground beneath you. And the space all around you. Feel that you can take three smooth breaths. In, up the spine, and out, down the spine. Three slow, long breaths. Now as you slowly bring yourself back here, back into the space you're in now, take a moment to rate yourself from one to 10, one being kind of really bad and 10 being excellent. At the moment, how are you currently experiencing your state of rest or your sleep at night? So if you've got your pen and paper, you can give yourself kind of a number from one to 10 to how well or how poorly you're sleeping. And then if you think about kind of your exercise, your activity. 
where are you on a scale from one to 10? If you're really thinking honestly about it. And your meals, the nourishing aspect. Where would you rate yourself there? And your social relationship from one to 10. What would you rate yourself as? Cool. Well done. So the first rating was for our rest or sleep. The second rating was for exercise. Um, third rating was for our meals. How nourishing are they? Are we being a little bit naughty <laughs> and not really watching what we're eating? And the last one being social relationships. Mm. And I personally find this quite interesting, Nina, because even taking part in it myself, um, it's really interesting to be able to see the numbers that come up. I don't know how it was for you. Um, and, and specifically for us at the moment, because we're back in lockdown, um, our social relationships. Um, so very interesting. Um, we're going to move a little bit deeper by now being able to take one of these topics that Nina has chosen um, in her grounding exercise and in the um, journaling and rating from one to 10. Um, perhaps we can look at them again, the rest or sleep, the exercise, the meals or the social relationships. And perhaps one of them is already jumping out at you. Um, I know for me, as I said just now, social relationships is jumping out at me because that is very minimum of that happening here at the moment. So just take some time, take a couple of breaths, look at them. If nothing's jumping out at you, then um, perhaps just choose one as a practice. Uh, we will be doing this um, as part of our homework. Um, not forced at all, but it is just nice to see where we are in our own uh, life and in our own situation and where we can um, assist ourselves in improving in order for us to be able to nourish ourselves a little bit more. So often we need to, once we've found the topic that we want to work on, um, we need to find an action plan that we can put into place um, I'm sure for many of you, as well as myself, um, often we say, you know, oh, I need to start exercising at least four times a week. You know, Monday, I'm starting four times a week exercising. And then comes Monday, I'm snowed down with work. Uh, it's raining outside, so I'm not going to go for a run. So life happens. And... Had I put a plan in place, had I bought a good rain jacket, had I made sure that the weather was good, you know, these are kind of plans that we can put into place. And just as we would do if we were booking a holiday, right? If you're booking a holiday to go to Mauritius, let's say, um, you have to check when is it good to go? What are the flights? When can I book? When can my partner, if, they, if I have a partner or children, when is it suitable for us to go? And then once we've de um, decided on that and put that into place, we need to then also ensure that things at home are taken care of. For instance, pets, um, if we don't want to take the kids with, the kids need to be taken care of. So as you can see, we take these um, actions so that we can put into place so that when the time comes for us to go for our beautiful holiday to Mauritius, everything is sorted. Um, so it's the same as we would do here. Um, so for instance, I'm going to give an example for me, social relationships. I would perhaps WhatsApp all my friends and I would say, hey guys, you know, missing you guys so much. I know we can't get out. We're in lockdown. But how about this Saturday evening or Sunday, we all get together on Zoom or Skype or FaceTime and we have a little 
session online just so that we can interact. Um, I know it's not the same, but this way we can still feel like we're coming together. So with careful intention that we're placing into our action, we start feeling a little bit more confident and comfortable with moving forward in this way. Where if there wasn't a plan in action, then if something else had to come up, we would very quickly and easily be able to push that aside. If I had not reached out to my friends to say, let's get together Saturday night on Zoom, have your wine ready, anything you want to share, somebody calls me and something comes up, I can't cancel because I've already intently put a plan in action. So I'm going to stop blabbing on <laughs> and I'm going to give us a couple of minutes for us to choose the topic if we haven't yet already um, and to just have a quick think about how we can move forward um, with the topic in question. What is it that you feel you need to do in order for this to be able to um, become something that you can use to nourish yourself. So let's take a couple of minutes, three to five minutes. When you're ready, please either just put your hand up um, or quickly say, thank you, I'm done, so that we know. Nina and I will do the exercise too. <laughs> So I've put into the little chat um, a little bit of a poll there. I hope you can all access the chat room. And maybe for each of you who are there can just type in which one out of those four maybe you're the most interested in addressing. Then I just have an idea, or we have an idea of what is kind of the most um, popular one tonight. <laughs> Victoria's thinking. <laughs> Too much chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm I hear you. That is food. <laughs> Exercise, good. Exercise for Ravia. And if Victoria is going for rest, then we're going to have like an equal thing on everything because conflict between need to have sleep and social <laughs> have to go with social. <laughs> um, um, need more aerobic exercise, not just stretching, also not just walking on the flat. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. So <laughs> you've identified what is needed. Very good, Aneka. Good job. So I think, I can't see anyone else, but it looks like everyone looks like they're kind of ready. So if we maybe um, address, maybe let's address social responsibility, kind of the social action, since that came up for like Nicole and Victoria, um, and kind of you can earmark exercise and um, meals, or your over chocolate eating rabia. And kind of with the with the same kind of, kind of system or follow through that we're going to go through. So, if you look at social responsibility, if you ask yourself, are you having too much of a social life? Because you can either be on the extreme of having 
too much of something or too little. So, um, so for example, Nicole, I'm assuming you're kind of on the spectrum of too little. Victoria, are you on the spectrum of too much or too little? Too little. All right. So this is the the um, also too little. Okay. So pretty much, and I was just going to say, and this is the opposite for me. My social life is a little very busy because there's not there's not much of a lockdown out in farm life. So if we look at too much too and too little, we'll focus obviously on the too little side tonight. And it's very. Um, easy, Nicole's already addressed it, you know, on how to maybe increase or build up your, your social interactions with people. And it is the idea of having, you know, a pl plan in place. The idea is, you know, Nicole was saying, first of all, if you want to go on holiday, where do you want to go on holiday? So Mauritius. So the idea is, okay, well, kind of, not kind of like where do you want to have social interaction but kind of like with whom do you want to have social interactions is it the certain members of your family because definitely certain members of my family i do not really need to have social interactions because they're just going to draw me down but there are certain members of the family who i really would like to and who are uplifting so it's identifying who they are you know which friends um and uh you know work colleagues or, or, or people that you, you, you know, you, you would like to, to meet. So it's kind of, that is your where. If you look at kind of your, um, your travel example again, you know, how are you going to get to Mauritius? Are you going to be going by car? Are you going to be flying? That's an important component of your travel as to, you know, how are you going to get somewhere? And the same thing is with us, you know, how are we going to get um, this social interaction in? And if we don't schedule it for a time, be it, you know, a weekly meeting with someone or a monthly meeting or a quarterly, and it's literally putting the time in our diary um, to say when these things need to happen. And um, uh, what do I have here? A set of time. And the important thing is then obviously once you've set a time or a day with a person is to to stick to it to try and not allow something to to um, kind of get around it and so so that is kind of just the one example with regards to social responsibility the or kind of social interactions that we have if we take something like exercise and I'll go through it very easily and quickly because it also is often a, a big one that comes up is if we know that we want to do more cardio, for example, and we want to get cracking in, um, in the morning, it's, or, or even with your yoga practice, you want to maybe do more yoga, you want to ensure that you pretty much have your yoga mat <laughs> lying out there for you to, to jump on first thing in the morning to trip over when you get out of bed in the morning. If you want to go for a walk or a run, have your running shoes literally next to your bed um, make sure you don't answer, you know, your phone until you've, you've done your, your lap or your yoga practice. Um, and the important thing is also always what you need to do is have it prepared or planned the night or the day before. So, you know, if you're wanting to get up first thing in the morning to do yoga, make sure your mat is out there now. If you're wanting to go for a walk first thing in the morning, your shoes need to be out there already. If you have to in the morning try and open your cupboard, try to find socks, try to find shoes, try to find the raincoat, it's already going to be five, ten minutes and you're going to be frustrated. So when everything is ready and organized, then, then it makes life a lot easier. Um, so is there anyone who wants to have a quick comment and say anything before we move on to the next phase, the next part? All good. V looks good. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, so I've we've sorry, and I, I think we didn't send out, but we've got our little ebook, which we'll um, uh, email to you after the session with all of this in. So you can always just choose kind of like a topic and 
um, go through it in your own time tomorrow morning and make a comment here or there for, for kind of discussion. Um, and then I think Nicole will take us through a really nice yoga nidra now. I hope. You hope. <laughs> yeah, right. Annika is saying something. Keeping a journal always a good motivator. Absolutely. Keeping a journal is so important. And I've actually found that uh, I used to have like five journals <laughs> writing something in a different book. So now I use my diary for it all. It's all in front of me in one book. I don't need to look for it anywhere else. Um, you know, whether it's a new moon release to bring it in on the full moon, it's all happening in one book. Um, so that when we schedule in meetings or when we schedule in social stuff, exercise, I find the more it's in front of you in a book that you're using every single day, the easier it is for us to stick with, well, for me anyway. So well done, guys. Um, part of the owning our stuff is really that, is really looking at these and these are just a couple of examples, you know, the sleep, the activity, the meals, the social um, interaction. You know, there are other topics that could be coming up for you. Um, but being able to look at that and actually say, you know what, you're right. I really need to make an effort. I need to own up that I, I so could be getting my friends together or I so could be exercising at least twice a week. Um, and just by us acknowledging that and by us putting that thought and into our head and, and perhaps even bringing a little bit of forgiveness into it, which is actually the topic for tomorrow night. Um, we allow ourselves and give ourselves permission to move and work through it. Good. So I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I need to get up and I need to shake it off a bit. <laughs> so if anybody wants to join me, you're more than welcome to. It's going to take my headphones off. I'm going to get up and I'm just going to shake it out a bit. <clears throat> Shake your arms, shake your legs, shake your head from side to side, your shoulders. Good. You can have a little boogie while we add it. <laughs> Good. Okay, and then just slow it down a little bit. I know some of you have just had some yoga, which is always great before relaxation good so depending on where you are at if you in your bedroom on the bed on the couch please make sure that you get nice and comfortable you can lie down on the floor if you are seated please make sure that you are seated up against the wall or on a chair and if on a chair make sure that you don't fall off if you Relax. So rather don't sit in a chair, actually, please either lie on the floor or lie up <laughs> against, sit up against the wall. Good. So while you're getting comfortable and while you are lying down on the floor, make sure that you are not causing yourself discomfort here. So check in on your pelvis, check in on your lower back. If you want to bend your knees, keep your feet flat, then move your feet apart a little bit wider than hip distance so that your knees can fall in to each other. Make sure that your arms are out to the side, palms facing up. Good. Just breathe into your shoulders. 
Release any tension there that you might still be holding on to. Move your head from side to side. Releasing any tension you might still be holding on in your neck. Good. And then take another nice deep breath in. Breathe in as deeply as you can. And then as you exhale, release it out of your mouth with a big sigh. <sighs> Just releasing and letting go. And we're going to do that three more times. Breathe in deeply. And breathing out fully. Good. Last one. Good. And then just bringing your focus and attention inwards. Feeling the whole backside of your body lying on the floor, being supported by the floor, being supported by Mother Earth. The back of your head, your shoulders, your back, your buttocks, your legs if they're stretched out your calves, all the way down into your heels and into your feet if your knees are bent. Your arms are either on the floor or resting on your pelvis. Good. So moving more into relaxation rather than a yoga nidra, we're going to do a little visualization here. So just taking some time to scan through our body all the way from the crown of our head into our facial muscles, our shoulders, making sure that we are relaxed here, not holding any tension anywhere. Into our arms, elbows, wrists, hands, fingers, our chest, our stomach, our upper back, pelvis and if we feel any tension in any of these areas then bring your focus and attention to that area and just breathe into it breathing in the word let and breathing out the word go let go and then moving through your body in this manner until you reach the pelvis, the buttocks, the legs, the knees, the ankles, the feet, the soles of your feet into the tips of your toes. And I'm just going to give you some time here to really scan your bright body of any, anything that might come up. For you to breathe through, release, and let go. Good, and then very gently, very slowly, bring your focus and attention to the task that you chose from our earlier exercise. Be it sleep, be it activity, be it meals, be it social relationships. And just once again, Check in on yourself on the number that you gave yourself from one to 10 for this topic. And then as we spoke about putting a plan into place, I would like you to visualize yourself doing that now. So visualize yourself putting a plan in place in order for you to be able to move that number that um, you gave yourself to a higher number. 
visualizing yourself putting your plan into place what is it that you need to do in order to get to your goal visualize this happening now and then visualize yourself in action so if it's exercise visualize yourself in an online aerobics class or if you are able to do in-person classes visualize yourself being there if that's your thing if you've chosen social relationships perhaps visualize yourself meeting up with those people that bring the best out in you make you feel happy wholesome you if you've chosen meals visualize yourself sitting at the table and looking at this delicious nourishing meal before you allow yourself to savor every moment of it so whatever task you are visualizing yourself doing right now really move into the feeling of it how does it feel to be doing what you've set yourself out to do is there a sensation is there a feeling that comes up perhaps even a smell or a color Just scan through your body to see how and if anything seems to have changed for you after putting this practice into place. Good. And then very gently ending off with your action. Finishing that delicious meal, saying goodbye to your friends. Coming home from your exercise. How does that feel now after you've been able to put that practice in place how does it feel after the practice do you feel happy fulfilled satisfied do you feel well nourished and even note if you're feeling that something might be missing. Good. And then very gently, very slowly, start taking in deeper breaths to bring your awareness back into your physical being your body lying in the room on your floor on your mat taking another deep breath in and as you breathe out gently starting to wiggle your fingers your toes moving your head from side to side and on your next inhalation give yourself a nice big stretch Good, and then on the next exhalation, hug your knees into your chest, give yourself a big squeeze. And I always put this in, give yourself a big, I love myself. We say that far too little. Do you say that? 
Good. So give yourself a big love. We all need to love ourselves more. And then gently roll onto the side, allowing shoulder to be above shoulder, hip above hip. Before you gently push yourself off and up into a seated posture. Good, well done guys. <laughs> I'm gonna hand you over to my relaxed friend, <laughs> Nina. Thank, thank, thank the call. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Do a closing on you. have just been out with the fairies for a while, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's always so nice to um, you know, end off on a nice, positive, and inspirational kind of mindset. Um, and and yeah, so hope you guys have all um, enjoyed this little practice with us, just kind of um, addressing or firstly just acknowledging you know that it's always good to take a little bit of time out for ourselves just to be present and have like we're doing now a little bit of a social interaction um and also realizing that when it comes to nourishing our stuff the kind of the first step we have to do is um take charge kind of own up to where our limitations are um, and how we can then possibly address them to, to improve and to move forward. And doing so in a very kind of gentle and positive manner. Um, not being hard on ourselves, not, you know, saying, oh, you know, we are so naughty and blah, blah, blah. Actually just being very honest and being like, okay, you know, this is where my little shortfall is right now. And these are little mini steps I can slowly start taking towards going in the right direction um so yeah so just remember we are here we'll be back here to tomorrow evening again just looking at the the topic of forgiveness which is quite a nice one um to to talk about and um we'll be doing the same kind of things a nice little grounding practice having a little chat and then a nice um, relaxation at the end so yeah we'll still be on if anyone has any questions or comments or advice things like that we are open for all of that and i think nicole will be able to unmute you because i'm not a host or a co-host you can unmute yourself you should be able to unmute yourselves Annika, what do you thank you? Nina, Nicole, lovely to see Victoria and Rabia too. Nice reminder to put into practice. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Annika. Good. So, if anybody else has questions, thank you, Victoria. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. Um, <clears throat> As Nina said, we look forward to tomorrow night forgiveness. Forgiveness is always a big topic. Don't worry, we won't be diving in too deep. <laughs> we'll keep it um, to our Great current year. topic. Yeah, and, and you are welcome to, <laughs> to, to bring your cup of tea or your glass of wine. wine. Or your Maybe I'll bring a g and tea with me um, <laughs> tomorrow night. <laughs> have, a, have a good little catch up. Mm. Okay. Good, well done. Thank you. I'm going to tune off. Thank you everybody for joining us for tonight and those that are watching the recording. Uh, Nina and I are both super excited and so happy to have you with us, whether it is live or recording, watching. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please get hold of us either on our Facebook page or Instagram page. Um, and yes, we look forward to tomorrow night, which will be about forgiveness. Thanks so much. See you guys soon. See you guys. Lots of love. Bye.